game. She said, I trust my teammates completely. They lift me more than they know. This has to be a team effort today. Well, no question about it, Holly. We take a look at some of those other teammates in the starting lineups. For Vegas, Lindsey Allen with McBride, and then Angel McCautry and Carolyn Swords. For Seattle, Jordan Canada gets the start. Sue Bird still out, still dealing with some of the lingering effects from that bone bruise she suffered in Seattle's second game of the season. So she is going to be out for a second straight game after she had missed five, returned, and now missed two. You see Asia Wilson draws the defensive assignment on Brianna Stewart. That's something to keep an eye on this game. And Stewie with the immediate 15-foot jumper. So smooth. Seattle, you know they want to get back on the winning track. Coming off a loss to Indiana two days ago, snapping Seattle's nine-game winning streak. Meanwhile, Vegas just recently had their seven-game winning streak snapped by Chicago and then bounced back with a big win after that. Here is Howard. Natasha Howard can't pop it in on the drive, but she has been playing much better of late for Seattle. Last possession for Vegas. You saw Asia Wilson get the ball. The double team came. She had cutters there, but simply couldn't pass it out. It's going to be shots like that that are so important. Mid-range from Angel McCaughtry to take some of that pressure off of Wilson. Angel McCaughtry with the first bucket of the game for the Aces. It's the first meeting this regular season between these two teams. They will meet again in a few days as Lloyd can't finish. It's out of bounds off of Vegas. Asia Wilson's going to get the double team, and this time it comes from the high side. And Bill Lambier told us when a player goes to double, that offensive player then has to die. And here, Angel McCluttry, and when she has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, she can score. Howard scoops it up. Fading away from Swords, can't get it to drop. Rebound McCautry for Vegas. Although I like that matchup for Seattle because Howard can be so mobile on the offensive end. She can have, it could be in her favor on that end of the floor. Nice hesitation and finish from Lindsey Allen. Lindsey Allen has been a real bright spot for Bill Lambier in Vegas this season, starting at the point. As Stewart silky smooth from deep, connects on a three. Now, Asia Wilson has the tough defensive assignment. On this end of the floor, Brianna Stewart does not have to guard Asia Wilson. That might help her in terms of her legs late in the game. Instead, Stewart gets swords. McCautry, the deep catch, nuzzled into Clark, and then was fouled by Stewart. And Angel McCautry will shoot two. Brianna Stewart comes up high. There's a nice screen set by Natasha Howard. And Stewart coming off of a game where she did not shoot as well as normal and starting this game well. A foul on Stewart there, her first. Maybe could have been a play on. I didn't think it was a foul. So yes, play on. <laughs> so option number two then. <laughs> Here is Lloyd coming off a 35-point performance in the loss to Indiana. Lloyd has had a really strong season thus far for Seattle as Howard can't push it in. She's 0 for 3 to start. Has had some good looks. Yeah, she's had really good looks and she has really good activity. I'm sure Gary Kotzenberg is fine with the shot she's taking. Gary Kloppenberg telling us earlier today that Natasha Howard's confidence has really been growing of late. And she's gotten back into shape as Clark is called for the foul, was not happy with it. Here's Gary. You know, his hair stays smooth. He, he, he doesn't get a cut there, but he's got a very nice suave head of hair. He's trimming up the sideburns at least, though. You think so? I do. Okay. Angel McCautry back at the free throw line. That's what Ve Vegas does so well is get to the line. Speaking of haircuts, how about Bill Lambeer? He's not shaggy Bill anymore. The beard gone. I mean, he's got a little fuzz going there. Let's, uh, let's be completely transparent. But the beard is gone, and the hair is now nicely coiffed. Yeah. The same style he's had, he said, in the last 50 years. Yeah, and, and so his team won the first game after the haircut, so he doesn't have to worry about any bad juju. A 7-5 aces lead off the start. 
McBride off on a three. Stewart the rebound. Stewart will take. Good contest out on the perimeter from Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson ducks inside. Can't finish. Secured by Howard. all over Clark on the perimeter as Stewart saw an easy foul to draw and did so. Brianna Stewart will shoot two. Brianna Stewart knows she has Lindsay Allen, a much smaller player on her, looking for the shot, and then Swords comes over and gets a lot of the body. And so the foul actually called on Carolyn Swords. Stewart with all five Seattle points thus far, make it six. Now, I mean, we told you about the haircut. Here is the haircut. Bill Lambeer getting the shaggy mop trimmed. Oh, yeah. That was the camera work of the great Holly Road, by the First way. Yeah. There's nothing she doesn't do. McBride can't spin it in. Like, I can think of a lot of people that would be less intimidating to ask if I can go take your haircut than Bill Lambeer. <laughs> well, Coach was a good sport. He said he's never gotten a haircut with the mask on before, but he was a great sport letting us film that. You know, he said that uh, he's a player's coach, and he always sticks up for his players. Him looking on Shaggy on national TV probably... Uh, Got the stylist here quicker, and a shout out to Asia Wilson, her sponsorship with Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew stepping up big time to support that salon. All players and coaches get their haircut for free. So Asia Wilson directly responsible for her coach's haircut. I love the tie in there. Yeah, Bill was thanking Mountain Dew before the game to us as well. So grateful for that haircut. Seven points thus far from Angel McCaughtry, seven from Brianna Stewart. McBride can't hit. Seen some good looks from McBride and from Natasha Howard that haven't necessarily dropped early. Clark off on a three. Howard the rebound. Can't put it in, but is fouled. And Natasha Howard will go to the line. And we've seen this over the course of the last couple games with Natasha Howard. You see her legs coming back. You see her fitness returning. And so much of what she does is predicated on that. You know, being able to run around and stay active. And again, even though here early, Ryan, she's only one for five, she's been really active and looking really good for Seattle. You see the last three games compared to the first ten for Natasha Howard. And this is the reigning defensive player of the year who last season was all WNBA first team. And Seattle was able to win games, Hamby checking in for Las Vegas, at an incredible clip despite Howard kind of working into shape. I mean, it makes you wonder just how great the Seattle team can be when Howard is playing at full efficacy and Sue Bird is back as well. Yes. Look right now, you see Jewel Lloyd sitting in the lap of Asia Wilson, even though the ball is on the other side of the floor. So much attention being sent her way. Here is Canada. Pass was a little low, otherwise might have been an opportunity. Howard going behind the back to the reverse. Beautiful move, Natasha Howard. The 12-9 Seattle lead. Allen zips it. Wilson can't hit. Howard the rebound. Her fourth of the quarter. Clark catches the down court feed. Good D. De'Erica Hamby got in the mix. Stewart won it back. Lloyd swivels it up. Couldn't finish. Here comes Allen pedaling it out of traffic. Lindsay Allen's leaner rolls off. These teams are going to need a break at some point soon here. <laughs> They're getting one at the next whistle. They are. For a little inside TV. No whistle there, though. Just good hands and a steal. 
I like the couple possessions ago, Asia Wilson setting a high ball screen, so she doesn't start the possession with a defender on both sides of her. Clark on the steal was fronting Wilson. Two on one, Canada lays it in. And Bill Lambeer will take a timeout. Seattle, its largest lead, it's five, and big action for Brianna Stewart early. One of the reasons she's an MVP candidate, she can hit from deep, and then point for the assist. The WNBA on ABC is brought to you by AT&T 5G and Taco Bell. Order ahead and pick up your favorites at our... his wife today. There are special remembrances, 24 seconds of silence before the game to remember him, his jersey on the court here behind both benches. I noticed Kayla McBride wearing her purple and gold shoes in his honor. Many photos of them with the players running before the game. Just so much love. He had poured so much of himself, his expertise, his time into these women. They want to make sure that Kobe is remembered and his impact on the women's game celebrated today. Yeah, you see him on the shoes there. And Holly, I mean, we saw it firsthand. You know, think about how many times LaChina, Rebecca, Pam, you or I were at a game and Kobe Bryant was sitting courtside to watch these women play and always such a vocal advocate for this league as well. Specifically last time you know, we were in Vegas for the All-Star game, he was courtside with Gianna. Yeah. As Holly mentioned, Kobe's birthday tomorrow and then Kobe Day on Monday, 824, his two jersey numbers. Five point Seattle lead as McBride can't hit the three. Stewart the rebound. Brianna Stewart with six rebounds in this first quarter to go with seven points. Canada. Here's Whitcomb. Sammy Whitcomb gets denied by Asia Wilson, who then controls it for Vegas. And now on this end of the floor, Asia Wilson has Mag Bagor as the defender on her, a long player who's trying to get in front, push her out. Look at the attention. Beautiful oh, how about that move. Ooh. She saw Brianna Stewart coming right, so spun back to the left side. First field goal of the game for Asia Wilson, the only player in the top five in points and rebounds this season. Stewart, deep catch, draws two, still able to finish. Uh, she is so long and her release point is high, so she can get those shots off against many defenders. Wilson lobs it in, McBride kicks it out, Robinson hits. Nice rhythm on that set from Vegas. Here's Lloyd. Had it poked away by Robinson. Wilson feeds it back to her two on one. Robinson leaves it and Hamby puts it home. Last two possessions for Vegas, we saw what their identity is. One was a mid-range pull-up jumper after getting dribble penetration and the other forcing a turnover and getting out in transition. Canada flips it in. Diving in with the shoulder and then oh laying it home. Good hands by Canada. One of the league's premier perimeter defenders. Stewart gives it up. Two for one opportunity here for Seattle. Stewart will take. No. And Wilson with the fourth board of the quarter. McCautry out of the game, played six minutes. She plays in shorter burst for Vegas. Nice feed, Danielle Robinson to McBride, but McBride just couldn't finish. Coming off the game for Kayla McBride, where she was nine for 10, ridiculously efficient against Connecticut. It was a remarkable performance. In fact, it was the first time a starting guard made at least 90% of their field goal attempts when shooting at least 10 times since 2014 in Cappy Pondexter. That's courtesy of the great folks at Elias. Two seconds left in the quarter. Robinson gets a whistle with 1.2 to go in the first. 
You know when you go against Vegas that one of the keys is going to be to keep them off the free throw line. They are so good getting there. Was it Lloyd's left hand? Because the right one looked completely clean. I think so. Let's take a look at the upcoming WNBA National TV schedule. CBS Sportsnet tonight. Indiana, fresh off a feisty win against Seattle, takes on Chicago. And the Liberty face Connecticut. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com or visit the WNBA app. The Fever were fired up after snapping Seattle's nine-game winning streak. Hamby steals the inbound and puts it in. Big mistake from Seattle to end the quarter. And a heads-up play from De'Arica Hamby. Wow, strong finish to the first from Vegas. Hamby the steal and the putback. Our score at the end of one. Vegas 19, Seattle 18. We'll be right back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Welcome back here with Seattle guard Sue Bird. And Sue, this is a close game, a fun matchup. What are your thoughts so far for Seattle, what they can be doing even better? Um... You know, Vegas is the type of team that likes to get to the free throw line, uh, maybe not bail them out a little bit, especially there at the end when the clock's running down. But it's the first quarter, so I think both teams are still feeling each other out. We'll see what happens. This is your second game that you've missed. I know Indiana took it very personally that you did not play in that loss. What, what's your status and how did you react to those comments? Um, yeah, I thought they were kind of funny. Um, I think they forgot they were going to have to see me in the lunch line and have to see me in the elevator. So that was kind of funny. Um, you know, I've never based my decision on my body on another team, you know, especially not Indiana. So it is what it is. Uh, luckily, we get to play them on Tuesday. Okay. And I uh, like the shout out for the shirt. Yeah, you got it for the old people, you know. Well, wow. some fire comeback from Sue Bird <laughs> after some interesting comments out of Indiana following their win against Seattle as young. Hits plus the foul. Now, let, let's have you hear what we were referring to there and Kennedy Burke's comments after the Fever's win over the storm. I mean, for Seattle, you got to play the whole team. You can't sit. I mean, obviously, she didn't want Super to not sit. She wanted the whole team. And the fact that it, it was, I don't know, it was kind of like a slap of the face, I guess. So she was basically saying, hey, if you're going to give us everyone, you got to, you can't leave out one, I mean, because we were ready regardless. Even if Super did play, I mean, it showed. I mean, we were ready. We only had eight, but everyone showed up, so. Well, Kennedy Burke sort of implying that Sue Bird was sitting just to take the game off, taking the opponent lightly. And Marianne Stanley was incredibly fired up after the game as well. So the combination of those comments, I believe, caught the ire of Sue. Well, they should. I mean, in terms of you don't want anybody saying you're taking them lightly, you're taking a game off uh, because of the opponent. At least ask Sue if that's what she did, you know, and clearly not because she's not playing today against the second best in terms of record team in the WNBA. So I can understand why Sue took some umbrage to that. I, and I, I'm, I'm glad we, we got some fireworks before Tuesday's right. matchup. Exactly. Tuesday night on ESPN2 with Seattle and Indiana. You're going to want to watch that one. Here's Hamby bodying inside. De'Arica Hamby has been a big factor off the bench for Las Vegas today. Pretty much every game, that yeah. seems like that sentence is being said. She brings so much energy off the bench, just raises the level of intensity when she's on the floor. Whitcomb got fouled and will shoot a pair. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I actually spent part of the afternoon yesterday with Derek Hamby. We're working on a feature that we hope to bring you soon about moms here in the WNBA bubble. And let me just say, it is exhausting to take care of a three-year-old in life. And Derek <laughs> is balancing that. She's balancing playing at a very high level. And her daughter, Amaya, is adorable and precious. And yet, it does take a ton of energy. Her mom, Carla, is here, of course, helping her. But I just want to shout out Derek Hamby. She's got a lot on her plate and doing every aspect of it at a very high level. There is adorable Amaya with the headphones on. 
Holly and her have become best friends in the Wubble. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing that feature for sure. By the way, as you, the audience, I'm sure observed, it was not, in fact, a foul, but rather a turnover against Whitcomb, called for a travel on that last Seattle possession. They get some momentum here. Up six now. Here's Rodgers from three. That's off the mark. She is one of the lone three-point threats, really, on uh, Vegas. They do not shoot often from three. By far the fewest attempts per game in the league. Russell left it short off the nice setup from Prince. Here comes Rodgers with Robinson flipping it up and off the window. Hamby the offensive board, and she is down. And Ryan, that's one of the interesting, you know, subplots to this game is that you have a team that takes the most threes in the Seattle Storm. It's such a big part of what they do, as you see D-Rob going into the paint. And you have Vegas, who takes the fewest by far. And much like their last game, their loss against Indiana, right now, Seattle not shooting the three ball well. They are only one for seven from the perimeter. And so after that Indiana game, they said, you know, we were missing shots that we normally make, so we had to tighten things up on the defensive end, and we didn't. So we'll see if they're able to tighten things up here on the defensive end while they're struggling from three. A 26-20 Vegas lead. Seattle shooting at just 36% from the floor overall as Young gets the roll. Jackie Young off to a good start today after she had struggled her last two games. And she was coming off a stretch of five games where she was really good and then struggled for two. It adds so much to Vegas when she can drive and hit her mid-range pull-up. Number one pick in 2019. Here's Natasha Howard just missed the layup wildly. Had a good look. Robinson, the Euro step to leave. Hamby can't squeeze it in. And Stewart comes away with it for Seattle. Eight rebounds now for Brianna Stewart to go with nine points. And a foul called against Hamby, whose aggression and physicality has made a big difference for Vegas. You see Seattle, though, a little bit sloppy with some of their passes, and that time Hamby gets her hand on it. We've seen Vegas turn some of those sloppy passes into turnovers and easy two the other way. Well, here's something to consider as well, Rebecca. You know, we have to go to commercial, so you're just going to have to I'll wait. Consider that. That's what I want you to consider. It's an eight-point game, second quarter action. Poised throughout the whole game, up 10 or down 10, right? Rebound the basketball all game long. Get good shots the entire game. We can get anything we want offense. Just got to have the confidence to make the shots. We're getting easy shots. Knock them down. Then we go and turn the ball over again, wide open layups. It cannot happen. You have to get a good shot every time down against this team. Let's go. And one of the reasons they're able to get the shots that Bill Lambier wants from the perimeter players is because of the attention the defense is going to give to Asia Wilson. That will give your shooters an extra beat to get an open look. That jumper rolls off. Wilson, the rebound, puts it in. This deficit Seattle is facing is the second largest deficit they faced in a game all year. You take out the Washington game, third game of the season for Seattle, in which they got waxed and trailed by a big number for a lot of that action. They haven't trailed by more than seven in any other game they've played, save today. And we talked about Asia Wilson getting surrounded. And as a post player, one of the ways you can get yourself an easy look is to get on the offensive glass. The other is to try to sprint down the floor and beat your defender and beat the help side down. So it's good to see Asia Wilson, even though she's getting so much defensive attention, staying active, staying involved. We heard Holly Rose report at the beginning of the game that she wants to focus on those things when she's surrounded. And Rebecca, you read my mind because, you know, we talked about at the, at the top of the show that Seattle had this plan for Asia, and she has just four points, but the rest of her teammates really stepping up in a huge way. Seven for Angel McCautry, six off the bench from Danielle Robinson, Jackie Young with five points. So she's getting a lot of attention, but the rest of her team finding a way to make Seattle pay. And it's resulted in an eight-point lead as Wilson can't finish there. Knocked out of bounds. Last hit, Clark. 
At least for now, they're going to say it's still Vegas ball. There will be a conference here. And it looks like instead Seattle's going to be awarded the possession as look like it lasted the left hand of Carolyn Swords and thus it is Seattle basketball. And you heard Holly Rowe talking about the other players stepping up for Vegas and prior to that you see it again now. Brianna Stewart the one who's being really efficient for Seattle. Some of the other players on the team need to pick up their efficiency in their scoring. Lloyd 0 for 4 thus far. Lloyd had a tap from behind and it'll stay with Seattle three to shoot. Lloyd had it stripped and the shot clock expires as Seattle turns it over for a sixth time this half. And Jewel Lloyd coming off a monster game versus Indiana where she had 35 points, 12 for 19 from the floor. A much quieter start here, Rye. That game from Jewel Lloyd, one of four in WNBA history, one of four players, that is, to have a game with 35 points and four steals. Cynthia Cooper, Diana Taurasi, and Maya Moore, the others. Angel McCautry can't bank it in. Stewart the rebound. You know, I still haven't told you what you need to consider. You have to break. I have it. That's going the other way. An offensive foul called against Natasha Howard as Seattle turns it over a seventh time. Well, it's this. You know, you're more than halfway into the regular season now for these teams. And we know there's such a dramatic difference between finishing with a top two seed or finishing below there and then having to face at least one single elimination game in the playoffs. And Seattle has a very difficult schedule the rest of the way. Only Dallas has a more difficult schedule than Seattle the rest of the way. So as much as it's felt like, well, Seattle's going to waltz to a top two seed because of how good L.A., Vegas, Minnesota have been, there's still going to be a lot of work to be done for Seattle or any team that wants one of those top seeds. As Wilson, another put back on the offensive glass. What a great possession by Aza Wilson. She was surrounded at the free throw line. She looked opposite, found the open Jackie Young, wasn't able to make the shot. So what does she do? Continue with the play and get on the offensive glass. Six points, seven rebounds for Wilson as Stewart connects. Brianna Stewart now with 13 points on four of six shooting. The rest of Seattle has been very quiet offensively. Playing without Sue Bird, because with bone bruise in her knee, nice find, Wilson to Robinson. Again, you know that Seattle wants to trap off the screen, so you use Asia Wilson to set it. She doesn't force the shot, makes the extra pass. Stewart off on a three. Good hustle by Howard, but it's off her out of bounds. Asia Wilson continues to work hard here, getting on the offensive glass, but she knows it's not just about scoring. Here, two defenders there, so a beautiful pass inside to Danielle Robinson. And that goes back to what Holly was talking about in the open, about trusting her teammates and how she's consulted Bill Lambier. What do I do? How can I help in these situations where I'm getting this attention? And her players working off of her, cutting to the basket there. Swords goes into the right side, puts her arms up so Wilson can see her. They, too, understand the attention that Asia Wilson's getting defensively. A 12-point Vegas lead as Seattle turns it over again jarring to see the Seattle offense having scored just 24 points thus far and Asia Wilson getting going. Maybe she can be called a point forward now. Looking, passing. Nice assist. I mean, like, my trust is pretty much through the roof for those guys. Uh, they really come in and you, you see the work in practice and you see them just put in a line. Sometimes they can get down on themselves, but when you have someone like Jackie Young who's really coming into herself and growing and you just see her take this big leap, uh, it kind of looks, at, you kind of look at the bubble and be like, wow, this this is really helpful for a lot of different people. So, you know, I've always had my a teammates back no matter what. Well, we've seen that from Asia Wilson in this second quarter that uh, she has really been distributing beautifully getting her teammates involved doubled here this time will take herself and able to draw the foul it's interesting seattle has alicia clark as the primary defender and then the long brianna stewart is the one coming over as the help side 
Asia Wilson showing tremendous patience on that possession. Wilson hits the first. So you see Clark battling, trying to push her out. Look at how long Brianna Stewart is. And Asia Wilson just takes her time. One dribble right. That's the way you want her to go. She's a left-hander. Angel McCautry with 7.6 rebounds in 10 minutes in this first half for seven points coming in the first quarter. McCautry on the bench now. She's been playing short spurts. Howard, the offensive rebound, could not finish the putback. Natasha Howard now two of eight from the floor. Wilson giving space that time, couldn't hit. Here comes Canada. Clark, a good look from three is good. And Seattle really needed that. Seattle's second in the league in three-point shooting percentage. Only L.A. is better. But they had started this game one of eight from downtown. And a whistle. Against Natasha Howard. Was working against Asia Wilson. And that is going to be the third foul against Howard. Vegas is in the bonus. So free throws coming here for Wilson. is on ESPN2 and the ESPN app Tuesday from the IMG bubble here in Bradenton, Florida. Kelsey Mitchell and the Fever take on Brianna Stewart in the storm. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. And now you know there's some fireworks between the two teams. So yeah, you do are. not want to miss that one. Seattle will get a couple days off before that game. They're at the end of a really tough stretch. Where they've been playing every other day for... I believe this is a 10th straight game. Yeah. You can see it a little bit in their legs, that every team has experienced it at some point in the bubble, but you see some of the shots being short, some of the Natasha Howard misses around the rim. Stewart on the steal. Here comes Seattle, down 12. 110 to go in the first half. Lloyd off on a three in the corner, and Young climbs for the rebound. Under a minute to go in this first half. As Robinson banks it in. And the lead is 14 for Las Vegas. Stewart somehow able to finish that over two. Over 6-4 and over 6-6, six, six, turning her back to the basket for the finish. Two for one opportunity for Vegas and Wilson so smooth with that jab step. Especially with Mercedes Russell as her primary defender on that possession. Seattle is not having Brianna Stewart be the primary defender on Asia Wilson at all this game. Seattle will take a timeout, draw up a play on this final possession with 20.5 to go in this first half. Hey, stay tuned for the WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm. LaChina Robinson will take you around the WNBA. I believe she has a special interview as well. She has a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? So just stay tuned for it. How about that jab step from Asia Wilson? And she perfectly read the defender. Mercedes Russell is more comfortable defensively being inside on the block, going against the back-to-the-basket type of player. Asia Wilson recognizes that. See, there's no double team coming and takes advantage of it. Big difference in this second quarter. The Aces outscoring the Storm by 13. And Seattle with five turnovers in the frame. Well, Billy and Beer told us Seattle is a rhythm team and we need to disrupt their rhythm And I think they've done a good job of that coupled with the fact that Seattle's really struggling from the struggling from the three-point line only two of 11 This is a team that shoots 42% from three on the season and It's the second straight game that they have struggled from three Five of 21 
against Indiana from three in their last game. Big performances from Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. We open the broadcast talking about both as MVP favorites thus far this season. And they both have delivered. Wilson has gotten help. Stewart not so much thus far. As Robinson comes up with a steal off the young deflection. Robinson speeds in. Can't finish, but McCautry can. Largest lead of the game for Las Vegas. It's up to 16. Stewart off on a three. And that will do it for the first half. What a performance from Las Vegas. A 45-29 lead at the half. The Vegas offense is going to start with Asia Wilson, and she's helped get other players involved, assisting the basketball, getting to the offensive glass, scoring herself as well. At IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, getting ready for the start of the third quarter between Vegas and Seattle. Vegas, a 45-29 lead as we welcome you back inside our ESPN studios. Hey, everybody, Ryan Rucco. Alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. That was the lowest scoring half of the season for Seattle. Some great D from Vegas. And look, we talked about the two MVP candidates, Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson. They both were able to do their thing in that first half. Yeah, they both certainly brought it. And for Brianna Stewart, it started in the first quarter. She had nine of her points in that first quarter. And we know what she's going to bring. Her face-up game, able to shoot over defenders. She was very good and efficient in that first half. Is also going to drive by you and shoot it over the two bigs inside. And Asia Wilson also handled herself really well. Had a really tough spin move and finish and was able to catch it at the free throw line and do her thing from there as well. So yes, Brianna Stewart brought it. Asia Wilson brought it. Well, which player had the better supporting cast in that first half? Without question, it was the rest of the team from Vegas. Yeah, you see the difference in the support that Asia got compared to Brianna. For more, let's go inside the Wubble to Holly Rowe. Well, one of the real key factors in that first half for Las Vegas was rebounding. They were just tougher on the boards. 25 rebounds compared to 17 for the Seattle Storm. But it also re resulted in points off of those rebounds. 13 second chance points for Seattle. Just one, excuse me, for Las Vegas. Just one for Seattle. So the Ace is really doing a nice job on the board, making Seattle pay and getting those second chance opportunities. Yeah, Holly, that is an excellent point. A huge difference in those second chance points as Howard starts the third quarter with a layup. A good sign for Seattle after Howard had a lot of good looks that did not drop early in the first half. We really want to get her working on the move. McCautry can't finish. Stewart the rebound. Brianna Stewart's 10th board. Nice find. And the layup no good from Howard. Again, one of those opportunities where Natasha Howard just has not finished well so far today. And then Vegas doing what they do. Cleaning up on the defensive end by getting to the glass. They have really played to their identity and succeeded in that identity today. Howard comes up with a steal. Canada, down court feed knocked away by Angel McCautry. One of the best of all time when it comes to steals in WNBA history. Seattle, a team that only averages 14 turnovers per game on the season, already in double digits early here in the third quarter. Wilson raises up, doesn't get the roll. Stewart's 11th rebound. This is an area of the game where Brianna Stewart has really improved from 2018, and that's her ability to get the defensive board and then be a facilitating forward the other way. We've seen this a lot from players like Candace Parker, Alyssa Thomas. This is an area of growth for Brianna Stewart since her MVP campaign. Gary Kloppenberg talked to us about it today, just how improved the ball handling is of Stewart. What it can unlock for Seattle's offense. Here's Lloyd, her jumper rims off. Jewel Lloyd and now 0 of 7 from the floor after she couldn't miss a couple nights ago against Indiana. And Lindsey Allen hits the baseline jumper. She's just effective in very few minutes. Only eight minutes in this game and already four points. Howard darting 
to the rim, lays that one home on a nice delivery from Jordan Canada. Seeing a little bit more player movement already here for Seattle. They thrive when they can move and cut and pass the basketball. McBride can't hit from three. Here is Stewart. Vegas now 0 of 6 from deep. McBride herself a very good three-point shooter. But hasn't been able to connect yet as Allen secures the rebound. Here's McBride's leaner, banks it in. And the first field goal of the game for Kayla McBride, who had been 0 of 6 following going 9 for 10 on Thursday night. Lloyd gets fouled, no call. And then Lloyd throws it into the backcourt, and that's going to be another Seattle turnover, their 11th of the game. You see two players in, in this game who struggled in their previous game and are now finding, or, or played great in their previous game and struggled early in this one. Kayla McBride finding her footing. We've seen on the Seattle and the same thing with Jewel Lloyd. They've tried to get her involved a little bit more here in the third quarter, but hasn't been able to get points on the board yet in this half. Just so shocking to see Seattle as a team shooting 33% as Angel McCautry buries the jumper. I mean, this is a Seattle team that has been an offensive juggernaut so far this season. And Vegas is a really good defensive team and the type of team that wears you down. 12th turnover for Seattle. Wilson lays it in on the kick ahead from Angel McCautry. And the lead has ballooned to 20 for Vegas. A timeout taken by Seattle. Well, Las Vegas turning defense into offense early in this third. Angel McCautry, 10th all-time in steal. Finding Asia Wilson. <laughs> here we go! Oh, oh, oh! Starts with us, guys. Right here, right here. We are... Left, left, get through. Get through! Oh! It was! in her third year, Asia Wilson is now the leader of this Vegas Aces team. And when you're the leader, you have to communicate on both ends of the floor, even if it's calling an and one on your own shot. <laughs> well, Bill Lambier talked about her knowing she is the unquestionable one for our group and embracing that. And he's seen so much growth from Asia in that regard as Stewart hits the leaner off the second effort from Jewel Lloyd. Brianna Stewart now with 17 points to go with 12 rebounds. She has played well. The supporting cast for Seattle, which has been tremendous this season, has really struggled this afternoon. Robinson hits a three. Danielle Robinson just 13 percent of her career from downtown, but connecting there on Vegas's first three of the game. Alicia Clark with an answer. You get the feeling as Vegas' confidence continues to grow in this game, and I think it stems from them on the defensive end of the floor. They can sense and feel that they're wearing Seattle down. We talked about this tough stretch of games for Seattle, but also Vegas is a physical team. They will wear you down physically throughout the course of the game. Asia Wilson with the rejection on Stewart. Chicken body. Chicken body. Like in Pete, me going across. Brandon Stewart, we don't see her get blocked much. And Asia Wilson right there. Great job to get the block without any contact with the body. And she, you could hear her asking about the body, about her time down the floor. And the turnover she just had, wondering if there was a foul. Meanwhile, it looked like Jewel Lloyd down and hurting a bit as she gets back on defense. Good effort from Lloyd, who was clearly hampered initially making her way back into the play. Now Jewel Lloyd coming out, Epiphany Prince back into the game for Seattle, but this is gonna be an important stretch for Seattle. They're gonna to have to get back in this game, play strong D and then good, get good looking shots on the other end. Nice little pass from Robinson. Wilson got fouled. And Asia Wilson will shoot two. 
And you see Jewel Lloyd being tended to now after seeing her in some pain. Buckle up, Rebecca. I'm ready. Fans I'm ready. can cheer on their team using Tap to Cheer in the WNBA app. Storm and Aces fans already have 1,192,707 total taps for this game. And the team with the most taps at the end of the game wins. Go to WNBA.com to check the leaderboard and see how your team stacks up against the rest of the league. I didn't think we were going to get over a million until the playoffs. We did it. We hit a million. I feel like, you know, that's a benchmark they make songs about. This is <laughs> enormous. Nice finish there from Canada. And Vegas turns it over. Jordan Canada has exceptional speed. And here the control, the spin, and the finish. She struggled to put the ball in the basket the last couple of games. And her offense, especially today, could be important with so many of her teammates being cold from the floor. Here's Prince giving it up. Stewart's jumper rolls off. Loose ball, back to Clark, chance for Seattle. Stewart raises up, can't hit good D by Dierica Hamby to contest Brianna Stewart. Good hands, Canada on the steal, burns to the bucket for two. She's provided a nice burst of energy here the last few minutes. Exactly what Seattle needs. They trail by as many as 21 in the quarter. Seattle had won nine straight before losing to Indiana on Thursday night. Vegas had won seven straight. They fell to Chicago Tuesday. Bounced back with a win against Connecticut on Thursday. As Asia Wilson works her way to the line. And we talk about Vegas wearing you down, and one of the ways they do it is continuing to attack the glass and getting to the free throw line. They've been to the free throw line 13 times already in this game. Seattle has only been there six, and it's how they sometimes make up for the fact that they don't take or make a lot of three-point shots. They get a lot more attempts than you at the free throw line, and that continues here today. And you mentioned the work on the glass as well. Asia Wilson with nine boards. How about Angel McCautry with 12 thus far to go with her 11 points? We haven't even mentioned Angel's name all that much today. Already with a double-double, 11 points, 12 boards. She continues to just have a remarkable season after only playing a couple minutes last year. Clark kicks the three. Let's check in with Holly. Okay, I've been selling Angel McCautry for the last three times down the court, so we were going to get there. Trust me, we were not forgetting Angel. That is her first double-double of the season. I've been all over it with their great PR guy, John Maxwell. We were waiting for her to get that one more rebound so we could celebrate her first double-double uh, of the season. Angel McCautry just boarding out. Nine of those rebounds came in the first half. She has been unbelievable for the Las Vegas Aces today. Well, the incredible part about Angel this season, Holly, is the production per minute from Angel McCautry. I mean, she is number one in the league right now when you look at points per 40 minutes among all players who played at least 50 minutes this season. She's averaging 29.7 points per 40 minutes. Now, she's only playing, and, and right now appears to be tended to in some way, but she's playing very limited minutes coming off you know, a, a, a big injury and, and Bill Lambeer wanting to make sure she's fresh for the playoffs. Think about her 11th season, she's career highs in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, career low in turnovers a game. How many players in their 11th year coming off injury are the most efficient that they've ever been? Nice move from Stewart there to hit the jumper. Uh, Angel McCautry, 13th all-time on the WNBA scoring list. 15-point game here. Storm has made a little ground up over the last few minutes. Wilson draws two. Can't finish an opportunity here for Seattle. Stewart with Prince, Russell, Canada, and Clark, the five on the floor for the Storm. Stewart, one-on-one -on -one with Hamby. Prince will take. Can't hit from three. 
And Seattle just four of 15 from deep. Brandis Thor is shouldering a lot of the load here this afternoon, and you wonder, will that have an impact on her in the fourth quarter? Robinson accelerates and gets smacked down by Mercedes Russell. Mercedes Russell, 6'6", six, six, comes over. Really nice job. Danielle Robinson wants to attack. She's able to get that shot off against a lot of bigger defenders. But not that time. Seven to shoot for Vegas. 2.09 to go in the third. Las Vegas, 62. Seattle, 47. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe. LaChina Robinson with you. Vegas has been in control all the second and third quarters after a tightly played first. Here's Wilson. Wilson bodies in and lays it home. Asia Wilson now with 21 points and 10 boards. And a foul against Vegas. Asia Wilson on the catch. She has two players with hands who are digging, and she, again, is so patient. Tremendous footwork. Likes to go to the baseline side, especially when she's on the left side of the floor. Had just two points in the first quarter. Nine in the second, ten so far in the third. Stewart kicks it out in the corner. Prince can hit the three. Seattle's had some good looks from deep. They have not been able to hit. It's the Seattle team that has been number one in offensive efficiency this entire season as that tips out of bounds off of Las Vegas. Gary Kloppenberg's team trying to find a rhythm. They have not had it today. They look tired, and it's probably because they're tired. <laughs> Canada can't finish. Hamby the rebound. Hamby all the way, coast to coast, draws the whistle. And De'Erica Hamby will shoot two. And this squad has been really good, the second unit for Vegas. And it starts with De'Erica Hamby. She brings so much energy. You see her take it coast to coast. And in that group is also Danielle Robbins and Jackie Young. They come in and increase the level of intensity for Vegas. Look at that bench point differential today. Yeah. 25 to 2 in favor of, favor of Vegas. As Howard comes back in for Seattle. Brianna Stewart is the only player in double-figure scoring for the entire Seattle team. And this could be a very interesting playoff matchup. Two incredibly different styles. Prince. Trying to duck inside of Young, lost it out of bounds. Seven to shoot, it'll stay with Seattle. It's really interesting too to, to watch Vegas because after you were watching the Chicago game where they were really able to neutralize Asia Wilson inside, you're like, oh, that, that's the recipe. That's the recipe to beat Vegas. Take Asia Wilson away and force the other players on the team to beat you. Well, Seattle's tried to do the same thing today and they've not been able to really neutralize Asia and her teammates have really come on strong. Lloyd, a good look from three, and she connects. Drew Lloyd back into the game after tending to something in the leg region. So just good to see her back on the floor. The leg region? Yeah. I mean, it was the leg in general. Uh, could have been, been, been a knee, could have been a hamstring, yeah. <laughs> For specifics, we go to Holly. <laughs> Robinson. The uh, upper quad hip area. Oh, okay, good. See, there we go. That's part of the leg region. Yeah, that's the lid. It is. The leg province. <laughs> Howard's leader is good. And a nice little burst here from Seattle. Try and make it more manageable going into the fourth. They trailed by as many as 21 in the third. Have cut it 
to 14. Rogers banks it in. Sugar Rogers with a big three there. Prince can't hit. And that will do it for the third. But the Las Vegas Aces with a 17 point lead after three. Everybody on the Aces getting in on the act. They built a hefty cushion as we go to the fourth. Here with the Aces, Angel McCautry. And Angel, your rebounding has been a huge factor in this game. How did you give that energy to your team, particularly in the first half? Yeah, well, we know um, Seattle's such a good team, so we had to limit them to one shot. So we know we need to get in the boards. That starts our break. You know, that starts our offense. So that's what I try to do for the team. Okay, they have pulled a little bit closer here. What do you do to close out the fourth quarter successfully? Uh, we've been doing great on defense. If you can stay solid, stay disciplined on D, you can finish out this game great. First double-double of the season for you. Good job, Phil. All right. Hey, Already. Mom. Hey, Dad. Hey, Detroit. Hey, everybody at home. Bye-bye. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm from Angel McCautry. As Vegas turns it over. Is that another player stepping on the sideline? We've seen that a bunch this season. We don't typically see that. Maybe adjusting to their new surroundings. Well, Rebecca, you asked me to check on that because we've seen that quite a bit in games. It is a little awkward because the floor has a black border, but inside of that is about a two-inch white line. So when your eye glances down, you see the black edge, but you don't necessarily see the white line. So the white line is out, not the black edge. Thanks for that, that explanation because we have seen it happen a ton so far this season. Yeah, much easier when it just goes out of bounds like that off the pass. <laughs> we know what happened there. I can see maybe, you know, maybe you think it's the three-point line or you just... You think it's the black line? Yeah. So you're not even really looking at the white line. Howard can't finish. Rebound Wilson. Her 13th board. Jackie Young banks it in. And the onslaught from Vegas continues. A 71-54 Aces lead. 8.35 to go on this fourth. Foul called against Hamby. Hey, Black, 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 come here. Come here. Asia Wilson now double-double, 21 points, 13 boards. Gets the rebound, pushing the other way. We know that's where Jackie Leon likes to operate in transition inside the three-point line. And Seattle turns it over for a 13th time. And this is just does not look like the Seattle team that we've seen play for so much of this season where they've been impressive, beating teams by double figures, looking like the cream of the crop in the bubble. They're getting it handed to them today by Vegas. Yeah, their average margin of victory is 18 and a half points. They have been bludgeoning teams. Going into that game against Indiana on Thursday when their nine-game winning streak was finally snapped. But there is a common theme to both those games, not having Sue Bird. In addition to this team showing some signs of fatigue at the end of the stretch, and then, wow, you face a defensive juggernaut like Las Vegas, and it could be a tough afternoon, and it has been thus far for Seattle. And we've talked a lot about Seattle's defense on Asia Wilson. That was a terrific possession by Vegas defending Brianna Stewart helping then switching out of it you got saw a good shot of sue bird there on the sideline but vegas on that possession just all over the floor did not give up anything easy and then see seattle with the offensive foul danielle robinson's been great off the bench for vegas 13 points five assists young bunny hops can't finish lasted howard it'll stay with las vegas yeah, we got 36 points in the paint for the Aces. They make their living in that real estate. They're a plus 12 in the paint in this game. 
Speaking of the paint, Wilson with another. 23 points, 13 rebounds for Asia Wilson. And because her teammates have stepped up and been able to score, she's going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage now. You cannot help as much when your guards have been able to score the way hers have. Lloyd can hit. Tap won't go, but a foul. Hey, coming up later, we'll have two Western Conference playoff game threes. We start with Rockets Thunder at 6 Eastern, 5 Central on ESPN. And then over on ABC, Anthony Davis led the Lakers in game two to even the series with Portland at one game apiece. They square off against Dame and the Blazers. Our coverage tips with a jump at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. And like everything else, both games are available on the ESPN app. Nice to have playoff hoops in full swing. A whole day of uh, yeah. hoops today. We got this game, then we got the playoff games later. You're a basketball fan. You gotta be locked in right now. This is a good August if you're a basketball fan, right? 14 points, eight rebounds for Howard. Who has picked it up after a slow start. Robinson hands it off. Shot clock at four. Young finds Hamby. No. And here comes Jewel Lloyd. Wow, what a feed from Lloyd. Stewart just couldn't finish. Tough angle. Wilson had it stripped by Howard. Lloyd spins over a handoff to Clark. Seattle needs a little rhythm here. And he'll stay with the storm. 12 to shoot. But it has been a while since this was a single digit game. Vegas took control in the second quarter and has not looked back. You have to go back to 341 of the second quarter for the last time Seattle was within single digits. Stewart gets fouled, and Brianna Stewart will shoot two. Let's check in with Holly Rowe for some news about Brittany Griner. Well, guys, just getting a press release from the Phoenix Mercury right now that their center, Brittany Griner, has left the WNBA bubble in Bradenton for personal reasons. She missed their game last night. I tried to get more information, but they said it was personal reasons, so I will try to keep you updated on that story, but a developing situation for Phoenix as their, uh, one of their best players leaves the WNBA bubble. Wow, that's really big news. Very significant. Phoenix, at times, has looked like a title contender. They've struggled a bit of late, but Brittany Griner central to everything they do, so we certainly hope everything is okay with Brittany and that she's back at some point. And because of protocols, you know when she returns, there's still going to be a quarantine period before she's allowed to play in games. Young's jumper rims off. Stewart's 15th rebound to go with 21 points. Stewart raises up, can't hit. 7 of 18 now from the floor. McBride scoops it in. It's an 18-point Vegas lead with 5.20 to go in this fourth. Clark. Find Stewart, a clean look from three, rims off. Loose ball, Lloyd. Canada will take, uh-uh. And Seattle, five of 21 from downtown. I wonder how soon before Gary Klopfer just empties his bench, in particular getting Stewart and Lloyd off the floor. Stewart at 30 minutes, Lloyd at 28. Hamby can't hit. 
Stewart the rebound, 4.30 to go in a game that has been dominated by Las Vegas. And a foul underneath against Danielle Robinson will step aside. 4.26 to go in the fourth. Asia Wilson doing a little bit of everything for Vegas. Asia Wilson adding to her MVP campaign. A little step back. Let's take a look at who's delivering brought to you by DoorDash. Yeah, Asia Wilson has certainly delivered today. She's been patient on the offensive end, figuring out how to let the game come to her while still being really active on the offensive glass, defensively blocking shots, finding open teammates. Certainly a trust level there today for Asia Wilson, knowing when she should take it herself and when she can find teammates cutting to the basket. Look at that stat line. Efficiency. Right here, Stop right here, Black. In the uh, mouth guard, right through the uh, the jersey. Yeah, the how about that? Top. Efficient, that, that's uh, efficient usage, too. Yeah. yeah, and still communicating with her teammates, keeping them locked in. Here's Stewart. Triple team. Stewart still able to bank it in. Oh, that's a tough shot. Because on the initial turn, she didn't realize the defense was there and took another step and used the bank. Pretty stuff. 23 points, 16 rebounds for Brianna Stewart. Bill Lambier, of course, hopes he does not have to put Asia Wilson back into this game. McCautry can't hit the jumper. Howard secures it for Seattle. Do they have a burst left in them? Clark. Howard turns and finishes. It's a 14-point game. Still time left. Canada knocks out the inbound. And it hit Danielle Robinson and will be Seattle basketball. Sue Bird, the spectator, seeing if her team has a comeback left here. Lloyd around the Stewart screen. Canada. Her jumper rims off. Not a lot of room for error right now if you're Seattle. Yeah. And we've talked all game long that Seattle looks a little bit tired and you wonder, you know, especially at this point of the game, it take a lot of energy to cut into this 14 point lead. McBride launches short. Here's Clark. Clark swiftly up the floor. Lloyd gives it up. Stewart. And a foul called against Vegas. That's going to put them over the limit. It'll put Stewart at the line. Seattle down 14. 240 to go in the fourth. The WNBA on ABC is brought to you by AT&T 5G and Taco Bell. Order ahead and pick up your favorites at our contactless drive. Hey, just keep it. Keep it together, guys. Come on. You know how they're going to call it. Come on. It just looks a mess, and we just need to get in something, clean it up, let them play our game and our system. Their game and their system, and they've been able to do it today. They have points in the paint. They have 38 there. They've gotten to the free throw line. They've been able to play through Asia Wilson on the defensive end. They've limited Seattle and cleaned up on the glass. Talked about it. Vegas does not rely much at all on the three-point shot, but they wear you down. They get in the paint. They get to the line. Stewart goes one for two from the line. Deflection off the pass, and Sammy Wickham went down. And Sammy Wickham is grabbing at her right leg, and she is down for Seattle. We saw Seattle picking up in full court, trying to get some energy, making one last push. Non-contact? It's hard to tell.
Sammy Wickham's been a huge part of what Seattle has done this season. Oh, oh melt her right ankle. Stepping on Brianna Stewart's foot. Yeah. Howard locks up McCautry. And they will jump it up. 2.21 to go. Vegas up by 13. Vegas has had a double-digit lead on Seattle since 3.41 to go in the second quarter. You see the numbers for Sammy Wickham this season. Career highs across the board. Quiet today. Scoreless in her 13 minutes. Howard wins the tip. Here comes Stewart. Seattle needs buckets, and they need them quickly. Clark spins and hooks it in with the left hand. It's an 11-point game. Not quite done yet. Robinson speeds away from the trap. Smart by Vegas. You want to use as much clock here as you can. Robinson gets blocked by Stewart, and it last hit Robinson. It's Seattle basketball. And Brianna Stewart has a 7-1 wingspan. Great job there by making sure it goes off D-Rob. Seattle will take a timeout. 148 to go in the fourth. The Vegas lead is 11, which is still significant, but it's the closest Seattle has been in a very long time. They have not been within 11 since 137 to go in the second quarter. How important is this game? I mean, you see in the standings, you know, if, if Vegas wins this, they're only half game out of first. Right now, they have the same record as L.A. But this is the first time these two teams have met, so it's an important head-to-head -head matchup. And a couple minutes ago, it looked like this game was over. And the thing with Seattle, even though they have struggled from the three-point line today, you know that they can make them and have multiple players who can. So certainly, an 11-point deficit in 148 is not insurmountable. Taking a look at the upcoming WNBA National TV schedule tonight. Doubleheader on CBS Sportsnet. Indiana and Chicago. The Liberty in Connecticut. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com or visit the WNBA app. Interested to see Indiana. How are they going to follow up their big win against Seattle on Thursday night? Sammy Whitcomb coming back into the game for Seattle. Good sign when it comes to her ankle. She's certainly one of those players who can be a sniper from the perimeter. Hasn't made one yet today, but very capable. And you may have been able to hear she's wearing a mic for us, asking which side to inbound on. Here is Stewart. Stewart fading away, able to hit. It's a single-digit game. Clark harassing McCautry. She tosses ahead wildly. Robinson able to flag it down. Now Seattle thought about fouling for a moment. They will play straight up D. 127 to go. McCautry can't hit. Stewart the rebound. A 9-0 Seattle run. Canada through the lane. Finds Stewart a three. With 1.16 to go. A 12 0 Seattle run and a foul in the backcourt against Natasha Howard. Brianna Stewart, it's crunch time. You know she's going to get the basketball there. Back to the basket, shimmy, turn around. That's the inside. Then you've got the outside as well, draining a big three. Great job by Canada to penetrate and dish. Sue Bird says, yep. Seattle had a foul to give. They just gave it. They can play straight up D now. No need to foul. 
six-point game. McBride the crossover. The leaner is good. Big bucket from Kayla McBride to snap the 12-0 run from Seattle. Canada is fouled on the drive quickly. And Vegas is over the limit, so Jordan Canada now is going to shoot two big free throws. Kayla McBride, huge shot coming down. Needed to crush the momentum a bit for Seattle. Mid-range pull-up, so good from there. And Jordan Canada then pushing pace the other way. Seattle trailed by 18 with 4.26 to go. And a chance to once again cut it to six here with 59.7 seconds remaining. And Canada hits both. Vegas has had trouble with these inbounds at times. This time, Robinson in the backcourt. Evading traffic, flings it ahead to a wide open McCautry for the layup. Great job by Danielle Robinson to handle the pressure and still see her teammate open on the other end. Clark can't hit the three and that may just about do it. Seattle needed that triple and instead they will foul Asia Wilson and put her at the line with 39.1 seconds remaining. Look at D-Rap, she's got the entire long Seattle defense chasing her, but still heady, heads up, finding Angel McCartry. That was an important play. And what a fit Danielle Robinson has been in Las Vegas. Her speed is exactly what Bill Lambier wants. 13.7 assists for Robinson today off the bench. And Wilson misses the first. <laughs> Twenty three points 14 rebounds for Asia Wilson. She's nine of eleven from the line Brianna Stewart 29 points 17 rebounds Wilson misses both Stewart the rebound and a timeout taken by Seattle They will have one remaining So the door not completely shut there by Vegas Cracked open just a bit We heard Bill Lambeer say two doesn't hurt us, no three ball. Yeah. And so of course Seattle's gotta be looking to go for the three. You would think Brandon Stewart would be a prime target for that, but you can even get it on dribble penetration, try to suck in the defense and then get a quick three. 38.8 to go, Vegas by eight. Clark to trigger in, gets it to Stewart. Wickham, her three is good. Exactly the play you talked about, partner. It's a five-point game, 33.7 to go. McBride loses it. Wickham has it, keeps it in the front court. Stewart's leaner, won't go, loose ball, grabbed by Vegas. Robinson has it with 21.9 to go. She is fouled. Wow, this has been a wild last few minutes and Seattle had a golden opportunity there. Yeah, you see the great play into Brianna Stewart, the flare screen for Sammy Whitcomb, one of the best in the league at hitting threes. And then they get the steal. What an opportunity here, Ryan, to cut it to a three-point game. But again, Vegas getting the defensive board when they really needed to. And Stewart's not thinking about it in that moment, but she had Wickham wide open behind her from three. Tough, though, when you got your momentum going to the hoop and a scramble. Both free throws hit by Robinson, adding to her outstanding day. And a timeout taken by Seattle. That'll be their final timeout. Check in quickly with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, we told you at the top of the show that the other players for Las Vegas needed to come to play. Asia Wilson has done her job with 23 points, but can we give D-Rob, Danielle Robinson, a little shout-out? 
15 points for her off the bench. Composure down the stretch. Just hit those two critical free throws. D-Rob doing everything and more to show up for the Aces today in this big game. Absolutely, Holly. And as we talked about, just the perfect fit for what Bill Lambier wants for this Aces team. Seven-point game, 21.9 to go. Stewart, a look from three is off. Wilson contested it beautifully, and that should do it. Canada tried to apply a foul, and it was called, but at this point, that's just going to give Danielle Robinson a chance to pad the stats of it. Stewart thought she was fouled. I think there was some contact, but I, I think it was Stewart going into Asia Wilson. I thought that was really good def defense by Asia Wilson. Might have been just straight up and down there with Stewart leaning forward. Yeah. Huge games from Stewart and Wilson. And a torrid comeback here from Seattle in the final four and a half minutes. But it is going to come up just short. Robinson goes one for two. It is all cosmetic at this point. Stewart, her three, won't go. Rebound McBride, and that will do it. An impressive afternoon from the Las Vegas Aces as they take down the top team in the league, 82-74 the final. Second straight loss for Seattle.